Hi guys, Alex here from Overland and Essentials. Today we're going to look at first aid kit. What do you carry in your Overland vehicle? Um, for me, I've got a little bit of an advanced uh, first aid kit, let's say there. You know, I've had some previous first aid courses, like probably most people have. Today, you know, it really doesn't matter what sort of level first aid uh, of, of a first aider you are for some of the parts of the kit. It's, it's something that could be a lifesaver at the end of the day. I carry these four packs. Um, the first one is this Life Systems one. We'll get into them individually in a moment. And I carry this sort of plastic um, C3 one here. Another um, military first aid kit. And then, of course, the, or the IFAC or individual first aid kit there. So let's have a look at them one by one. It's in a, like a little bit of a waterproof bag. It says Life Systems Mountain um, Leader, but that's not quite correct it, the bag was it's probably got some stuff in here that was in here originally and some stuff that i have um, added to it so let's just get you in a bit closer so it's pretty well the good thing with these is they're pretty well organized look it's got your all your little bits i mean i don't necessarily keep them in those places anymore although the gloves are still there so starting on the outside you've got plastic gloves or rubber gloves you know it's not just for um your patient's protection is for your protection also. Um, and then starting at the left side, we got um, medication, accessories, burns and breathing. Okay, so it's, like I said, it's not necessarily gonna have those things in here, but I can see through here what's in here. And, you know, we've got a, a burn stress in here, um, you know, if uh, for the obvious. <laughs> I was just about to explain that, but so you got your burn stress in there some alcohol wipes, um, there's a compression bandage and there's some more gloves on this side, not too much on this side. And then just behind here, I've got some dressings, um, burn dressing again. So generally, anything to do with burns is on this side. There's some uh, dressing pads and you know whatnot, stuff I picked up from the military and, and, uh, and so on. And so yeah, mostly burn dressing there. So we'll just close that. Um, cat tourniquet, um, probably not sure how how this how much this is used in a, in a civilian application. In fact, it's probably not. Anyway, it's it's basically it's a military type um, tourniquet combat um, application tourniquet, and you basically, for those who don't know, you just you whack it on. Um, obviously, it doesn't go around your wrist, <laughs> but in any case. You feed that back through here. This needs to be done in a hurry. I've got the camera right in front of me and I'm leaning over the camera trying to show you. But basically, you'd put this over wherever, um, on your leg or, you know, top of your arm, whatever. You can't, you can't go on your wrist. And then you basically, you just whip that open, get that handle out, and you just twist, twist this, and then that gets tighter and tighter and tighter, tightens up through here uh, until you stop the bleed. Now I know a lot of uh, first aid courses will tell you don't put a tourniquet on. Um, depends really what sort of training you've got, I suppose, at the end of the day. But for me, that could be an absolute lifesaver. If you don't put it on, you know, unfortunately, you know, I've seen people bleed out from not having things like this. And, you know, it's, it could be like, even if you're unskilled, uh, just to get this thing on could literally save somebody's life. It's got the t it says time there. Basically, you put the time in there so that, uh, that it's gone on, and then when the medics come along, and um, you know they know what exactly you've done. You put the tourniquet on. How long it's been on there for, so you don't will try to prevent any uh, further damage. Okay, so coming on again, underneath there we've got our scissors. Got a couple of pairs of scissors there, cutting through dressing whatever clothing and uh, and the dressings when you um, it's always good to have a couple pairs just in case you lose a pair and then just under here latex gloves in there again keep plenty of pairs of gloves 
Um, it's pretty much, it's come through different jobs that I've done and I've ended up with different bags or packs of gloves, so I just chucked them in here. But, you know, it will generally be, uh, if I'm going for gloves, I normally go at the other end anyway, where, you know, but that's the spare set there. Um, you've got this little little thing here, which you basically, you roll out, and then it's like a, like a bit of a... Uh, a place where you can lay stuff down, lay your tools down, your scissors and all that, bandages, without getting it all dirty. But anyway, that's what that's for. And then under here, we've got, uh, this is, what is it? sorry, so this is going to be for bleeding. Um, so the cat, the cat pretty much there in front of the, the major bleed thing. And inside here, you're going to have uh, various uh, dressings and things like that, bandages. Um, there's another compression bandage in there. There's some, uh, some types of butterfly stitches, plasters, you know, all that type of stuff is in there. And opposite it, I've got some, uh, some betadine and some more plaster tape in there. And then behind here, more betadine and dressings and bandages and stuff like that, plasters, seals, all that. So anything to do with bleeding, you're going to find in there. The good thing is, when it's all labelled up like this, Anyone could pick it up and get on with it. I know I said that some stuff's not exactly where it should be. The stuff that's not where it should be, if you read, you can see what's in there anyway. So yeah, so you got your bleed stuff there. And then on this side, it says breaks and sprains. So you just got a uh, um, a sling in there for your arm, whatever. And then there's a keep. I've got actually two or three of these, but that's basically. Um, you know, for, if you're going into shock or whatever, it's like a massive piece of silver paper. You get inside it, and it oh, and it's supposed to, well, it does prevent you from going into hypothermia and things like that. I've never actually used one, but I do keep them. If we ever broke down the motorway and stuff like that, and got the kids in the car. And as I said, so gloves on the other side. So that's pretty much it for this one. Let's get the cap back in there. You want really... We, you, we, the way we used to do is we used to set these up so they're ready to roll um, as soon as you get them out you know you want to be you, literally someone can bleed out in minutes so it's it's how quick you can do this and get it on so you want to keep that in there don't strap it in don't tie it in or anything like that so it literally will fall out um, every time you go into the kit which is a good thing so that's your mountain leader and I keep it like this. So this is, I've just got it on there, clear breathing and Sam's. Um, this is so anyone could pick this up or find it in my uh, Land Rover and see what's, as well, uh, see that that's what's inside it if you can't see clear enough. Now you do, you obviously will need some kind of training before you can use uh, the breathing, stuff for breathing. But for the Sam's, the Sam, which is a, it's a Sam splint. It basically is a foam, uh, a metal covered foam. So whichever way you bend it, you know, you can make it into sort of a support for your arm or wrist. Just strap it around. I'm not doing very well with the camera, am I? You strap it around. You know, just like a splint, basically. However, you want to you want to manipulate it. You can make that work. It's got some other uses too. But uh, anyway, you, you know, you can sort of improvise with things like that. Um, nose tubes, as I said, you'll probably need. To, uh, you will need uh, medic training for these. There's no point for me to start trying to tell you how to use these. Uh, best off to get yourself on a medic course um, or first aid course, advanced first aid course and they'll uh, run you through those things there. You know, if someone can't, uh, has got difficult breathing, you know, you've got different sizes, um, so, you know, for children, adults and extra large adults there. Look at the size of that one, I wouldn't fancy that going up my nose. And you just basically, they, you know, you slide them up your nose. Like I said, I don't want to go too far into it, um, just in case you end up trying it unskilled and it goes wrong, you'll be leaving me some terrible comments <laughs> so yeah same thing there these are for breathing that goes down in your mouth and uh, trying to open up an airwave and you've got one there that's pretty uh shocking when you first uh, see how to use these for uh for kids there or babies and but you, what you could do is keep one of these and that basically goes over uh you put it over it so if you got you're going to resuscitate someone you're going to be pumping on the chest and then you're going to stick that thing over the over their mouth, it's just like a plastic. I don't really want to open it because it's sterile. It could be. I oh, know we can get that out. Look, doesn't matter. 
So you just you whack this over their mouth. I mean, <laughs> the, the, you got this right. I'll tell you something, right? So you, you can you, you put like it's all on there. Like there's a nose. So you can't. It's sort of, you know. I don't want to say it, but idiot proof. So you whack that on your face. Like you can see exactly how to do it. it even tells you where to put your fingers. That it's going over your mouth. You blow in it. It's like a one-way valve. So you blow in there. Uh, no air is going to come back out, or this is the thing, you, you know, when you you were sort of giving someone a good old uh, few rescue breaths there, if you blow a bit too hard, it, it tends to go down in, and they end up blowing the back, uh, the uh, contents of their stomach back up. Um, but I just know it's got one way valve, so hopefully it wouldn't go back up into your mouth. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, uh, a lot of courses now say that you don't actually need to give the rescue breaths and you can just keep pumping on the chest. Uh, but again, I'm not going to give you any advice on that. I, you know, I'd put, you need to go on a first aid course if you haven't been. Just do it. You know, you might end up saving you, yourself, your mate, your kids, your wife, your... Well, yeah, <laughs> whoever. Uh, next up is the military one, the one that normally comes in a Land Rover. Um, same sort of thing in here. This one pretty much backs up the red one. See, for me, I think you can't go wrong. You can't have too much. I mean, it's not heavy to carry all this stuff. It's really so light. You know, I've got another foil blanket there. You know, and just various bandages and whatever. Pretty much backs up the uh, red one to make sure if I was running out, if there was more than one casualty, you know, whatever, I can get this thing out and I can start, you know, giving more than one person um, first aid or helping out whoever it is you know, without running out of gear, because some of these, you know, you get a first aid kit which comes with your car, let's say, and you're probably going to have a couple of bandages in there, you know, if you've got sort of five, six people, ten people that are in. So this one here, this is an IFAC, that's individual first aid kit, so if I was going walking off into the bush or anything like that, you know, it's always nice not to carry too much heavy stuff, but to be fair, most things, if I'm going walking for the day, most things I'll be needing is water, good first aid kit, because it depends on where you are of course, I mean if I'm in if I'm in the UK or sort of Europe, you know, civilised Europe let's say, then I, I, to be honest you just get out some water in your backpack and probably just one of these. Now in here I'll just have stuff of bleeding, you know, major bleeds really, a bit of burn dressing in there, but usually it's, it's a major bleed, um, there's compression bandages in there among other things, um, the old Israeli bandages. Uh, I've got a couple of some wipes in there, some tape, gaffer tape, got some gaffer tape in there, and uh, scissors and whatnot. So I won't pull it open because what this is actually designed to do is you will. So the cat goes in here as well, by the way. The cat tourniquet always is in this, this place. Now, the idea of this thing is, is that when you're in an emergency situation, you will literally rip that red handle down and it will pull the whole lot open and all the first aid stuff falls out into place ready to go. It's good to have an indication of what it is in case you're hurt and somebody else comes along and they see that, they know that they got something to help you with if they're not in the know of what this is anyway. So that's that's what I basically carry. So three items. Let me just pan you up. So it's those three items, uh, sorry, four items. Um, as you see there, look, that did actually say vehicle first aid. Now that's 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 pretty much what I carry. I mean, it, it, I think it depends. Like I say, w what skill level you've got and things like that. Um, but you know, it's the basics. I think when I first bought this one, what that came with it with the old first. If you go on a first aid course, you'll know what everything in there is and you'll know how to use it. So I would suggest doing something like that. I mean, that's a life systems one. I don't know what other ones are available. I think that was pretty reasonably priced as far as first aid kits go. They're not cheap. If you get a good one, they're not cheap. If you get the ones down Halfords that say motor, motor in first aid kit, most of the stuff in there is not going to be that great and mm, probably after a couple of years not going to be that serviceable. This one here is seven years old and of course you have to keep some of the things go off, some things don't go off, um, but lucky for me I've had access to other medical supplies which meant that uh, that, didn't, um, that wasn't for me. So, uh, your individual, you can get that from military, uh, you know, any sort of surplus or military stores, and then you just, you could take some stuff from there and put it in there if you want to have it that way around. 
and again for the the vehicle one that is actually a military vehicle one that's not what you're going to get down the Halford so wherever you are there's these motor uh, motor super stores whatever they'll normally give you an offer of some sort of first aid kit and you know really I probably wouldn't bother with it I'll just go online and um, and have a look I'm, I got this from a, a mountaineering shop so and this stuff obviously is through previous work so and you probably wouldn't want to use anything in here unless you've had some training when I worked in the UK uh, we actually got this book you know um, this is basically uh, just like a you know a handbook of what they're going to teach you on the course you know about like introduction to first aid to principles you know things like that and it's it's pretty much got it all in there you know there's some things you could go back to and look into um, just go on just go online and have a look at basic first aid kits you see what you want to spend some of the military runs are really really good and give you some really good stuff in there um, so they're always worth looking into and it's a bit pricey don't see it as oh this stuff's really expensive or this company's too expensive shop around a bit but as I say you it normally is a, it's, it is a little bit expensive okay guys so thanks for watching um, please like and subscribe um, hit the bell button um, I've, I've starting to get with the program now with youtube and i've added a couple of things on you probably see it on uh, on the bottom of the screen down left right wherever it is there's a there's my little rhino sign there and you can click that and subscribe to me you know i really appreciate all those subscriptions that everybody's you know every if you click that button thanks so much you know obviously it helps me out a lot and i want to keep doing these videos and keep them coming so um, as much information as i've i've sort of picked up over the years and uh, you know Obviously, uh, what Dad's taught me as well, that's all some good uh, vintage stuff there too. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate all that, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.